Hey fellow explorers, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know before you go to San Diego. And the first thing you should know is a little bit of background about this fine city. With 1.3 million residents calling this place home, 35 million people actually visit San Diego annually. Why do they come to San Diego? Well, for the very fine beaches, for the nature, for the parks, for the outdoor activities, people who love the outside, the sunshine, and the warm weather. Warm, not hot, just warm. With an average temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit year round, San Diego is an outdoor lover's paradise. Animal lovers come to visit the San Diego Zoo. Parents who love their kids visit Legoland theme park and history and military buffs will appreciate that San Diego is home to the nation's largest concentration of military personnel with over 100,000 active duty service members in San Diego. And while most of the military stuff can only be seen from afar, actually right here shooting this intro, I saw a Navy ship just off the Oceanside Pier. One ship you can go on is the USS Midway. It's been voted TripAdvisor's number one best thing to do in San Diego. It's a former aircraft carrier that's now a museum. You can see how sailors of days of old used to live on this ship. It's a pretty neat attraction. And by the way, there's plenty more to do in San Diego. I'm gonna get to more things to do at number 10. The second thing to know is just some information to help you get oriented to San Diego. And best place to get oriented is where I'm standing right now at the Cabrillo National Monument at the end of Point Loma. And each part of this video, by the way, I'm gonna shoot in a different part of San Diego so you get to see it as we go. But from here at this National Monument, you can see downtown San Diego off in the distance. Here in the foreground, Naval Station North Island where the real aircraft carriers dock. Uh, and just next to Naval Station, North Island, you will see Coronado, which has been voted one of the best beaches in the USA. We'll talk more about that later when we get to beaches. But here is the statue of Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. He is the first European to set foot on the west coast of the United States in the 1500s. And just beyond him, this landmass back here, you see this is Mexico. Now, talking about San Diego can sometimes be a little confusing because there's a San Diego County and then there's also a city called San Diego. That 1.3 million resident number I quoted earlier, that's in the city. The county has a little over 3 million people. The county's the bigger area. So in this video, I'll be talking about everything within the county, which to the south is bordered by Mexico and to the north is bordered by Marine Court Camp Pendleton and then to the north of that is Orange County home to Disneyland. Now it's this huge Marine Corps base that really buffers San Diego from the great Los Angeles region that really keeps San Diego feeling unique and a little bit funky. Now the county quite big. It's roughly the size of the state of Connecticut. That's 70 miles along the coast of the Pacific Ocean and then 86 miles from east to west. San Diego is often referred to as a city of villages with the different neighborhoods and associated cities having a very different feel and climate too. Much of touristy San Diego is around the coast. I'll go over the beaches when we get to section six, but let's first start with some of my favorite neighborhoods. Looking at downtown, you'll find this situated along San Diego Bay. I showed it to you earlier from the Cabrillo National Monument. It's a very walkable neighborhood. It's home to the convention center and also the gas lamp district, which is basically a uh, nightclub central in San Diego. Also home to Petco Park, our baseball stadium for the Padres and the USS Midway aircraft carry museum I talked about in number one. Around downtown, you'll also find some great attractions. Balboa Park is a really amazing urban park, home to the San Diego Zoo and about 17 different museums. Little Italy, just down the hill from Balboa Park, is your best spot to find Italian food, that's right. And where's this centered on? A street called India Street. I'm not kidding, India Street is the main street in Little Italy, uh, and we'll talk about Italian food when we get to the food section, but I've got some really tasty suggestions for you in Little Italy. Hillcrest is home to the LGBTQ community and home to a great weekend farmer's market. Down the hill from Hillcrest in Old Town, you're gonna find a really neat state park that memorializes the beginning of San Diego. The other side of the airport, you're gonna find Point Loma, home to the Cabrillo National Monument, and also Liberty Station. This used to be the formal naval base called the Naval Training Center. It's now a really neat neighborhood, shopping mall, and food hall there. Across the bay in Coronado, in addition to a really great beach, you're also going to find the historic Hotel del Coronado. It's a Victorian-style beach resort built in 1888. In fact, it's the second largest wood structure in the USA. It's worth a visit even if you're not staying at the hotel. And you get there by crossing the iconic blue Coronado Bridge, or you can take the 15-minute ferry ride from downtown. 
zooming out a little bit, the part of San Diego, south of San Diego Bay, this kind of whole area is often referred to as the creatively named South Bay. Uh, you're gonna find the best Mexican food here. Speaking of bays, San Diego has a second one, Mission Bay. It's not home to any big Navy ships or cargo ships, it's entirely a recreational bay. It has really great walking and biking paths. Mission Bay is also home to the original SeaWorld theme park. The third thing you should know is about getting into San Diego and where am I shooting this? I'm shooting this at Sunset Cliffs. This is just kind of down the hill from the Cabrillo National Monument, a great place to see the sunset. And by the way, in February when I'm recording this, there are people sunning themselves on the beach right back here. All right, well, coming into San Diego, if you're flying, there's one airport in San Diego, San Diego International Airport, code letters S-A-N. It is the busiest single runway airport in the world. There are 70 destinations that are served nonstop from San Diego, including Europe and Japan. If you're flying into San Diego and you want some amazing views, sit on the left side of the plane because as the flights come in, they fly in right next to downtown San Diego. You can almost reach out and touch the skyscraper buildings as you're coming in for a landing. The main carriers at San Diego Airport are Southwest and Alaska. Alaska Airlines. If you're coming in from Los Angeles, the Amtrak train can be a really good option. They offer nearly hourly service from Los Angeles Union Station to downtown San Diego. The ride will take you about three hours, so it's not the fastest way to get from LA to San Diego, but it is the most scenic because it goes right along the coast, right along the beach. If you want the best views, sit on the right-hand side. I will point out, though, because the tracks run so close to the beach, sometimes they are closed due to cliff collapses and things like that, so make sure the train's actually running before you show up to the train station. Another great way to get into San Diego is to drive. San Diego is very well connected to the neighboring cities by interstate highways. If you're coming in from Disneyland in Anaheim, it's gonna be 90 minutes to San Diego. Coming in from downtown Los Angeles, it'll take you about two hours, five hours from Las Vegas, and six hours from Phoenix, all provided you don't hit any traffic. Now, speaking of traffic, if you are coming from Los Angeles to San Diego, the worst times to drive are Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. Just kind of skip it. Don't go on Friday or Saturday afternoons. Try Friday morning. Try Saturday early morning. Sunday, great time to come in, but not a great time to leave. If you're leaving San Diego and going back to Los Angeles, Sunday evening, you're going to hit some pretty bad traffic too. Another popular way to come into San Diego is by cruise ship. Now, not all cruise ship terminals are well situated in cities, but San Diego's is. Each year, about 75 cruise ships dock in San Diego, and that's on 10 different cruise lines. Most of them are Mexican cruises. San Diego Bay is often considered the gateway to the Mexican Riviera. And if you're wondering, Chris, if those 10 cruise lines is one of them Disney, yes, Disney Cruise Line comes to San Diego too. Fourth thing to know is about getting around San Diego, and one of the best ways to get around is to walk. Now, San Diego's big, so you're not gonna be walking everywhere, but a lot of the neighborhoods are really quite walkable. One that's really walkable is where I'm shooting this right now is Ocean Beach. That's the Ocean Beach Pier, the longest pier on the west coast of the United States, and when it's open, it's really great for walking on. By the way, we've had some really big waves and so it's closed for repairs. Ocean Beach is also really cool to see the tide pools, low tide. You can see a lot of crabs and sea creatures around here. What are some other good ways to get around? Well, if you got a car, driving pretty good in San Diego. Most of San Diego, particularly the beaches, have free parking. You will find pay parking in the downtown areas bring a few quarters or even your credit card for the parking meters there. Mode of transport that's really popular for local San Diegans is bicycle, particularly in the beach communities. There are a lot of great bicycle paths where we're gonna go to next, Mission Beach. There's a great boardwalk that goes from Mission Beach to Pacific Beach that you can ride your bike on, skateboard, roller skate, a lot of fun for wheeled transportations. If you didn't bring a bike, you'll find a ton of places to rent bicycles in the beach communities. You can also do the you know rent by the app scooters that you'll find littered throughout the streets here in San Diego. And barring all of that, if you need to take a taxi, Uber, rideshare, Lyft, you'll find those to be quite plentiful. Taxis will be at the airport and the downtown area. The rest of San Diego, you'll be taking an Uber or Lyft, but there are quite a few Uber and Lyft drivers around, so you're never gonna be sitting around going, where are there, how come there's no Uber drivers? There's tons of them because I mentioned 35 million tourists come here annually, and I've had a lot of uh, friends and fellow explorers that have told me they've been able to get around San Diego just fine with Uber and Lyft. 
and the trolley. San Diego has a really good light rail system. It's called the San Diego Trolley. The Diego Trolley has 62 stations across the city. It comprises 65 miles of track on three different lines. It's really great if it goes where you want to go. It doesn't go everywhere. It doesn't go to the beach communities. It doesn't go to the airport. So you'll need to take some other form of transit to go there. There, San Diego does have a bus, but I find the bus isn't really that useful to go to tourist destinations either. You should also know about when to go to San Diego. And although I mentioned that San Diego is a great year round destination with that average 72 degree Fahrenheit temperature, there's definitely some parts of the year that are better than others for particular activities. If you want to come to the beach, the best months to come to the beach are July, August, and September. Chris, why not spring break or why not May or June? Well, because we often have this weather phenomenon called May gray and June gloom, where in the mornings up until about noon, it's often very cloudy and overcast, which means May and June are not very good beach months to come. They're great months to come and do all the other stuff in San Diego, but your beach vacations, you should plan for July, August, and September. September's my favorite beach month because the temperatures are still warm, the water's still warm, like 72 degrees Fahrenheit in the water, and all the tourists are gone. Yeah, June, July, and August is gonna be the busiest time in San Diego. That's when all the people from Arizona descend on San Diego. We call them the Zonies, and you'll see the beach parking lots like this one here in Mission Beach will just be full of Arizona license plates. The hotels are gonna be expensive, uh, but you know what, if that's the only time you can come, look, just go ahead and suck it up, suck up the rates, suck up the people. It's still great. Uh, San Diego Comic Con, one of the big events in July. If you like comics and pop culture, definitely come out for that. If you don't, avoid the week the Comic Con is here because the hotel rates will be like three times the price that they usually are. And if you come in the winter, like December, January, February right now, I'm still wearing short sleeves. I am wearing pants in the daytime. It can still be pretty warm, but at nighttime, you'll want to bring some long sleeves because well, you know, the temperatures cool down about 30 degrees Fahrenheit from what they are in the daytime. San Diego's really dry climate means nighttime temperatures drop quite a bit. Frankly, even in the summer, you'll probably want to also bring some long pants and a long sleeve shirt in addition to your beach wear. The sixth thing to know before you come to San Diego is about the beach. And with 70 miles of coastline along the San Diego coast, visiting the beach is probably the singular most popular thing to do in San Diego. Now, the beaches here are more than just laying around on them, but also really popular for surfing. San Diego has year-round surfable waves, biggest in the winter, smallest in the summer. Now, with so many beaches, which ones are the best ones to visit? Well, if you're driving in from Los Angeles, the first one you're gonna hit is Oceanside. Oceanside has this really neat pier that you can walk down. There's a neat strand that you can drive right along the beach. There's a bicycle path that you can take. Pretty cool beach. And there's some nice new hotels they built just right up in front of the pier. And if you're a movie buff, they've got the Top Gun house. Yes, the one that Tom Cruise lived in in Top Gun. Now it's right here above the pier and you can get pies there. It's now no longer Tom Cruise's house. It's now a bakery. But my favorite beach in San Diego with the sun setting behind me right now is probably Mission Beach. Actually, not probably, it's definitely Mission Beach. Why do I like Mission Beach? I love the fine white sand. I love the gentle sloping sand. I love the gentle slope out into the water, the sand bottom. I love the free parking that's here. And I also really like Belmont Park right on the sand. It is an amusement park that also has restaurants. There's a roller coaster in there, a classic wooden roller coaster called the Giant Dipper. If you're a thrill ride aficionado, you're definitely gonna wanna ride that roller coaster. But this beach is pretty fun too. It is definitely a scene in the summer. If you come on summer weekends, definitely try to get here before 10 a.m. if you wanna have any hope at finding any parking just past Mission Beach. That way is Pacific Beach. Pacific Beach is San Diego's party beach. It has the most bars per capita. There's also a really neat pier there called Crystal Pier that you can stay in a cottage over the water. Prices are somewhere between two and $600 a night, depending upon how fancy the cottage you get. I also showed you Ocean Beach before. I'm simply turning around to give you a sense of perspective. Ocean Beach is that pier that you see right out there. 
If you're coming to San Diego as a family with younger kids, two of the best beaches for you are Coronado, home to that Hotel Del Coronado. It has a really gentle slope and some of the smallest waves in the summer. La Jolla Shores is also home to some really small waves, great for the young kids too. If you go to La Jolla though, definitely be aware of the stingrays. Do the stingray shuffle because the small waves means that there's actually a lot of stingrays there. They like the ocean bottoms when it's really calm. The next thing to know before you go to San Diego is about food. If you watch my videos a lot, you'll know I'm a bit of a foodie, but I'm a cheap foodie, so I don't like my food to be too expensive. So first let's talk about pricing, and then we'll talk about some of my favorite things to eat in San Diego. Food in San Diego is more expensive than food in Los Angeles. There's about a 30% food premium on food in San Diego than in LA. And where that premium gets more expensive is in the beach areas, and where it gets even more expensive is in the Gaslamp District. The Gaslamp District down downtown San Diego is the most expensive place to eat. The restaurants here cater to tourists. They try to make themselves look very, very nice on the inside, and so they spend all of their money on the rent and on looking nice, and not quite as much of it on the food. So if you were eating in downtown, you want to sit down place that won't break your wallet. My favorite is the Old Spaghetti Factory right here. It's actually a mini chain across the US. They do really good spaghetti and meatballs. If you want their unique dish, check out the pasta with mazithra cheese. Cheese. It's kind of a Greek cheese. It's been an institution in San Diego in the gas lamp forever. Outside of the gas lamp district, if you want burgers, my favorite burger chain anywhere is In N Out Burger. They have tons of location across San Diego. Shake Shack has opened a few locations here as well. And because San Diego is just north of Mexico, the Mexican food in San Diego is going to be some of the best you're going to get anywhere in the US. So make sure you eat Mexican restaurants. And the quintessential Mexican food item to eat in San Diego is the fish taco. Ensenada style, which makes it a battered and fried fish taco. But the quintessential San Diego Mexican experience is at a taco shop. And there are these chains, it's kind of known as the Birdos. They started with Robertos, Albertos, Edelbertos. If the restaurant ends in Birdos, you know it's classic San Diegan taco shop food. There's, I think, something like over 50 or 80 taco shops in San Diego that end with Birdos. It's pretty crazy. San Diego also has a thriving microbrew beer scene. If you are into beer, you'll want to check out a few of these breweries. Some of the most well-known are Carl Strauss and Stone Brewing, but explore some of the smaller ones and find a new favorite for yourself. Speaking of beer, if you're looking for nightlife, the Gaslamp District in downtown has a lot of bars that tend to the upper end club side of things. If you're looking for something more like high-end evening cocktails, the Gaslamp District, a lot of these restaurants turn into nightclubs at night. If you're looking for more of a bar experience, Pacific Beach has the largest collection of bars anywhere in the city of San Diego. And if you like your bars more on the divey side, then check out Ocean Beach. You can totally do a dive bar crawl there. The next thing to know before you go to San Diego is about hotels, where to stay. And I have four main recommendations, but it kind of depends on what you want to do. My number one recommendation is downtown San Diego. Downtown San Diego has the largest collection of hotels in the city, uh, pretty nice hotels. The Marriott Marquis, one of the signature hotels right here. Also just this way is the Hyatt Manchester Grand. I've got a review of that Hyatt Manchester Grand in case you want to watch it. These are right on the harbor, so a lot a lot of the rooms have pretty nice views, uh, though the one caveat about staying in downtown San Diego is the parking's really expensive. I think I mentioned that earlier, so just factor that into your pricing. If you want a little cheaper parking and you're planning to rent a car, then you can check out Mission Valley. Uh, Mission Valley, it's about five, six miles from downtown. The hotels there will be a little less expensive and the parking will be cheaper as well. Uh, Old Town, it's kind of between downtown and Mission Valley, another good area close to the airport. Hotels not quite as nice, but you can get a few more bargains in Old Town. And finally, my fourth recommendation would be if you're visiting Legoland, you might want to consider staying up in Carlsbad. One of my favorite hotels in all of San Diego is the Park Hyatt in Carlsbad, the Park Hyatt Aviara. If you're interested in checking out that review, link in the description below. It is San Diego's best resort. 
And the 10th thing to know is about some of the other great things to do in San Diego. And the first one I want to talk about that I haven't really mentioned in detail already is Balboa Park. It's the cultural hub of San Diego. It's definitely worth at least a morning or afternoon visit. There's 17 museums there, a great natural history museum, science museum, and if you like comics and you didn't come here for Comic Con, the San Diego Comic Con Museum is there too. The park itself has free admission. You just have to pay admission to go into the actual things. Now where I'm standing right now, Belmont Park at Mission Beach. I know I covered the beach before. I talked about this roller coaster, but there's so much more here at Belmont Park. There's a whole bunch of other rides like a carousel and other thrill rides. Admission to Belmont Park also free. You just pay a little bit to go on the rides. If you enjoy hiking, San Diego also has a ton of great hiking paths. One of the most unique is at the Torrey Pines State Reserve located just north of La Jolla. It's set high atop an ocean bluff. It's home to the unique Torrey Pine tree only grows here in Torrey Pines in San Diego. There's plenty of great ocean view hikes throughout that park. And for those who love golf, San Diego's home to a ton of great golf courses, including the Torrey Pines world famous golf course where many PGA tournaments are played. One of my favorite places to shop is Seaport Village. It's located in downtown San Diego. It's got lots of really quaint, not chain shops. You know, the kind of places that might sell stuffed animals, flags, kites, or perhaps even pirate themed merchandise. And by the way, each one of those is actually a different store in Seaport Village. Really, there's too many things to do in San Diego for me to mention in this one video. So I've got more videos for you to watch. You might want to visit the USS Midway, the San Diego Zoo, SeaWorld, or La Jolla, which is also one of the best beaches that I didn't cover in detail in this video. Why? Because I've got a whole video on it right here. You'll also find the link in the description below. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you in one of these videos. <laughs>